Good day everyone and have a blessed day. Welcome to Team Subic where we say it's more fantastic in Subic. The team is composed of Clarence Fu, Justin Gay Lim, Charlene Nicolte, and your host, Akiko Fajardo. In this presentation, we aim to address Subic's uneven terrain, since Subic is known to be naturally full of hills and for its deep waters. We envision Subic resonating as a positive factor for the Olympic athletes' mental health. In adjacency to eco-psychology, a field that focuses on synthesizing ecology and psychology to promote sustainability. It studies the emotional bond between humans and the earth. Furthermore, the Philippines is capable of hosting an Olympics because the country has hosted the Southeast Asian Games in the years 1981, 1991, and 2005 in Manila, and recently, 2019 in New Clark City, Tarlac. Subic, a beautifully mixed cultural environment due to Americans who came and its many ports created the perfect environment for a special economic and free port zone, hence a global borderland. Subic is a place known for its uneven terrain, natural environment, deep waters, and low demographics. Developing a mixed-use typology suggests a potential boost in tourism and residency through the development of an Olympic village. Let me explain. Subic, in complement to what the DOF or Department of Finance said, the future master plan envisages Subic-based region's economic future and concrete development proposal in both public and private sectors. With the Philippine government unlocks the full potential of Subic Bay, hence having an economic and culturally diverse development of an Olympic village greatly boosts the port's capacity and the connectivity with the hinterlands to help continued efforts to decongest Metro Manila. Being a free port zone and a global borderland suggests an outstanding site. Also, aiding in a 2019 blueprint from JICA or Japan International Cooperation Agency, which aims to maximize the economic development potentials of the Subic Bay and its surrounding areas. For our antithesis, how can people control its dangerous but beautiful biodiversity as it continues to grow without hurting it? By hosting the Olympics in Subic, we can expose more people to its beauty and help them better understand the importance of the environment and biodiversity on not just their surroundings but also on their health, mentally and spiritually. And with Subic's tropical climate, util utilizing the process of organic architecture grounded on biophilic and biomorphic design theory to adapt to the environment will impact on a person's psyche, especially, especially on their performance. Thus, we will have a better understanding of not just the natural world, but how how we grow economically and and as people by taking note of the color palette within our site we have noticed that subic is in shades of blues white greens and browns we have factored in the colors of our site to emphasize the different sensations of perception of subic our chosen location giving us an understanding of the effects and philosophy of the colors on the mentality and symbology in a person's psyches. Next, before presenting the site analysis, we will briefly discuss the Olympics and how it will connect within our chosen site. We, we took note of the athlete's experience during the Olympics and requirements to justify the placement of our typologies. The Olympic Games are acknowledged as the most ancient and prestigious sports competition in the world. It is a competition where athletes showcase their prowess in a variety of sports and challenges. Next, we will discuss about we will discuss more about the Olympics. The Olympics are held both in the summer and winter. Summer competitions initially comprised 75 sports, 
but is now limited to 28 Olympic sports and depending on the Olympic Committee, 4 additional sports. And then, there are a total of 18 sports competitions in the Winter Olympics, however, only 9 have been chosen. The Olympic Games has a long history. It was inspired by an ancient Greek festival that was made up of contests in sports, music, and literature. It was by the 1800s that the Olympics started to establish itself as the world's foremost sports competition. As time moved forward, it continued to evolve and grow so much that nearly every nation is now represented. Colonies and overseas territories are allowed to fill their own teams. And in the year 2048, our country, the Philippines, will host the Olympic Games. From 1924 to 1972, the Philippines competed in every edition of the Summer Olympic Games and the Winter Olympic Games on five occasions. Our role as the host city is to ensure the different venues required for the Games are secured. In order to consolidate game concepts and mitigate risk, in accordance with the contract framework published in 2020 for hosting the Olympics and Paralympics, key actors and essential workers reside in the Olympic Village, a proposed to the concept of the Olympic Games and the plans for the continued development of the whole city, the Olympic Village is essential to the plans for the Games. They should provide safe, comfortable, and secure accommodation for all eligible athletes and officials for the duration of the Games. Three key areas of the Olympic Village are the Residential Zone, the International Zone, or otherwise known as the Olympic Village Plaza, and the Operational Zone. These are the users in Subic. Since the median age is 24, most of the users here would be young adults to adults. It also comprises children 14 and below and students ranging from 16 to 24 years old. Besides Subic being an age-inclusive community, which provides activities and spaces for all ages, it is also an advantage that Subic is a mixed culture, global community, so enthusiasts and visitors from age 15 to 68 can easily adapt their lifestyle here and fully enjoy the natural beauty of Subic, whether in different extreme sports, widely available, or beach hopping. There are also modern workers, 23 to 58 years old, and they will usually have a casual relaxation by the beach or food trips because they have their jobs to keep them busy. Aside from that, the Olympians, which are one of the main focus here for the village, ranging from 13 to 65 years old. They would benefit from Subic because besides the natural environment that greatly affects their mindset, since Olympians have to always keep their mental state and behavior in check in order to focus, Subic also offers a wide variety of food, landmarks, and activities from beaches to mountains so they won't get bored easily, especially after the Olympics. And lastly, retirees, ages 60 and above, usually decide to retire here because of its affordability and scenic view that has a peaceful and calming atmosphere so that they can spend time with their families in places such as the Subic Safari or Ocean Adventure and go on tours or resorts. Our chosen location is in Subic Bay. One of its notable advantages is the, is the site being near the airport, which makes it easier and less time consuming for the athletes when traveling. Another thing is that Another thing, it's only 14 minutes away from the nearest wellness center, so when there would be an immediate, immediate emergency that even the clinic inside the village can't handle, there would be a helipad ready to go. There would also be a ner there would also be nearby la landmarks such as the Fantastic Park, Kamana Spa Resort, Mangrove Park, and the Wildlife Rescue Center that the Olympians might enjoy with their family and if ever the athletes tend to be homesick and are accompanied by family, they can relax together with them. 
Our site is about 206, 276 hectares. For the zoning, Subic has a flexible variety of structures which makes it good for future development and the construction of the Olympic Village. The site is dominated with residential and commercial areas since Subic is known for its vacation area and also has a variety of resorts and water parks in the area. We made an in-depth circulation analysis of the site and we found out that majority of the heavy traffic circulation funnels towards the Corredor Road going to the Subic Airport, which is the one located on top of the map. And when it comes to the traffic analysis of the Subic Bay, most of the vehicle traffic comes from Corridor Road, which is the main road in the Subic area. And the traffic conditions are actually quite moderate for most times of the week. And although it can get traffic going to the Subic Airport in the area, the rest of the connecting roads are pretty much moderate going on during the week. So pretty much the typically traffic phone streets are the ones near the Subic Bay Airport. The culture within Subic. It has many landmarks and activities. The type of activities available are mostly rec recreational and they take full advantage of the area's rich history and natural beauty. And besides shopping, there are islands, beaches, beach resorts, resorts, historic tours, hiking trails, horse stables, golf courses, camping, an ocean park, and a zoo slash safari. In the past, many foreigners have come to the shores of Suwik, such as the Americans and the Spaniards, evidenced by the ex-naval base here and the old Spanish gates and all the diving sites which features old shipwrecked warboats. This has resulted in a development of its economic and freeport zone. So, Plus, they, to celebrate their proud history and identity, they hold festivals such as Phil and Friendship Day, Scoot Tourista Festival, and Subic Karaoke Karoka Festival and Subic Eye Festival, showcasing its lush and bountiful mixture of cultures. Subic, being a coastal municipality in the Philippines northwest of the capital, Manila, has views of sandy beaches and a popular diving spot home to shipwrecks and diverse coral species. The views include Subic Bay International Airport, Fantastic Park, Ocean Adventure, Subic Safari, Grande Island, IDESS Maritime Center, Ocean Adventure, Adventure Beach, Cagayan Point, OPSA Shooting Range, Magaul Bird Park, Mangrove Park, and the famous Triboa Bay. With our location being Subic, this site development top side facing north is composed of the following typologies. We believe in having the Olympic Stadium at the heart of our site, the velodrome in the southern area, the aquatic center near the bay, and the athletes' residences near the entrance and beside the parking. As we enter from the roadside, the side dive clearly shows how the Welcome Arc Northside greets us as we enter the Olympic Village directing us through their parking lot and greets us out through our Goodbye Arc south side by the road. As we enter the village, we are greeted first by the residences to home our athletes in each respective complex. Across the residences, we are greeted by an elliptical stadium followed by the velodrome near the road and lastly by the aquatic center by the port. This consists of activities and landmarks to explore near our site. Tourists can enjoy all kinds of activities available from jet skiing to mountain climbing and visit landmarks around Subic. On this slide, we have an exploded view of the vegetation map by the Triboa River, beaches, mangrove park, and its thick, tall, and lush forests. So sir, this is our sun and wind diagram. So the sun, the sun faces our side from the, north e the northeast, and then the wind comes from the north. The reason uh, why we chose this site specifically was thanks to these two things. One, 
with with the natural wind coming from the sea, it will give our sight a natural ventilation, thus relieving them from the heat which comes from the from the sun. Plus, since the sun is at that sweet spot near our sight, it will give our typology a certain sense of dramatic flair and beauty, while also also showcasing the natural beauty of our site because within our site there are many plants and species that live within it that help the biodiversity of the subic which we in turn hope will help which we hope in turn will help the athletes thus creating the beautiful harmony of light air and wind and earth showcasing the beauty of life which will does help the mental health and spiritual health of the athletes and then our design philosophy we want three things cultural inclusivity with nature our phrase being one with nature the reason for this is because we have observed that athletes tend to feel some kind of mental health uh, disorder or mental health state such as anxiety depression or something called uh, choking when they start entering the competition some of the at some of the athletes well all of the athletes in order to relieve that tension and anxiety they tend to try to sweat a lot through by exercising but the mo the most the thing they do the most in order to relieve some tension from their body is to sleep around with as many people as possible within the olympic village well not as possible it's more like to sleep around with whoever they find attractive in order to relieve some sense of anxiety and or tension so in order to address this mental health problem we we have repeatedly repeated the words being one with nature or with the natural world does thus our design philosophy or our, or our typologies are based around not just plants but also the living beings within the natural world such as fishes, uh, insects, animals, mammals, marine life, even materials such as feathers, scales, and shells. Which will be thus when you see our design when you see our designs the the typologies will be will feel very natural and flow naturally. That is our design philosophy. Let's now present the Olympic athletes residences. The Olympic residences is composed of six complexes having complex A Drew F, with 62 rooms which could accommodate a maximum of 8 athletes on the second level and decreases ascendingly due to the structure's wave precedence. On a top elevation, our unit measures 242.22 meters latitudinal and 390 meters longitudinal, which includes the offset of fire exits and evacuation slides on each side. Our building height of exactly 150 meters corresponds to the CFR or Code of Federal Regulation Part 77 stating the height of a structure above 499 feet or 152.10 meters are considered obstructions under the FAA. This gives our building a safe leeway of 2.10 meters from the regulation. On this slide, we have black and white elevations of Complex A to have a better visual understanding 
of one component of our set typology. As we can see, our fire exits and fire evacuation slides are highlighted in black and is prominent on four sides of our structure. On this page, we have an isometric view and a better visual understanding of the relationship for either typologies set complex AE or complex BD. On this slide, we have a set of construction drawing of the four-way spider connection fitting used throughout complex A through F. On this slide, we have a plan and elevation on one of the fire exit staircase and fire evacuation slide set being seen on the four sides used throughout the six complexes. On this slide, we have an isometric view of the fire exit staircase and evacuation slide set being an 8x2 Type C designed based on the 2022 IRJET or International Research Journal of Engineering and Technology entitled Rapid Fire Evacuation Slide, designed by Jubi Biju, Srekuti Sivadas, Joby Joy, Ashera Asharaf, Fr, Dr. Bennett, Korea Kose who are students from the Department of Civil Engineering, St. Joseph's College of Engineering and Technology, Palai, Kerala, India, five associate professors, Departments of Civil Engineering, St. Joseph's College of Engineering and Technology, Palai, and Kerala, India. This slide shows a scaled view of the floor plans used for this complex. For as we succeed, the floor plans would be zoomed in to better visualize the content. Let's now look at the lounge area located on the ground level. We have two lounge areas located on both ends of the complex. Each lounge area is elevated and caters food throughout the ground complex. To follow on the ground level, in blue we have koi ponds located on each exit by the concierge and in yellow are the scanning area to check the massive number of athletes entering the building. And in red are the metal benches like at airports to have a waiting area while security checks on all the incoming new residences residing in the complex. In green, we have four fire exits on each side of the complex. The most interesting part in purple are the elevators. Since the elevator on the upper left is inspired by the Las Vegas, Nevada Otis inclined high-speed elevators from the Luxor Hotel and Casino, built in 1993 and the other being a regular elevator we have a rendered top elevation of the ground level showcasing on the upper and lower curved walls features the mixed retail stores the security room on the right side and the platform stand encircled in green for marketing purposes sponsors or just a platform to perform near each concierge or front desk area we have an elevated piano platform for those who want to play. Here are some visual representations of just the ground level. We have views from the entrance, scanning area, and metal benches on the upper left, followed by our koi pond, the scanning area for the residences, luggages, and on the lower left, our elevated platform for marketing slash sponsors or just a small Kodak and at the last, we have a view from the elevated lounge area, which in fact also caters food and drinks for this level. On this level, in blue, we have the base number of 62 rooms, which could cater a maximum of 8 athletes. Having 4 different types of room designs based on the location, it's located on the structure. By the elevator, we have a sufficient mechanical in yellow and electrical room in green. In red, we have four fire exits located on each side of the complex. In pink, we have a atrium bridge because we believe that the air circulation of what an atrium provides remains superior for these types of complexes. On this slide, we have a rendered plan showcasing the rooms provided for the athletes and the color-coded circles indicating the four room designs based on its location. We now have the four room types in a rendered isometric view. Rooms type A, B, and C are mere copies from each other due to its location. 
each room varies in size and displacement of each room's layout, while room type D's rather extreme design features a much larger room due to its location but caters the same number of athletes. On this slide in blue, we have cafeteria tables and chairs around the walls of the structure, giving a complete overview of the surrounding nature of Subic. In yellow, starting from this level, we have an escalator. In red, starting from this level, due to its size, we have two fire exits present. And we have the inclined elevator on the upper left. On this slide, in pink, we have the food court. The food court is divided into two sections, the outermost being the fast food section for the quick come and go and on the middle, slightly elevated, are the higher graded food. On this slide, starting from this level in purple, we have a restroom on the lower right, which is also found ascending to the 37th level. In green, we have the hallway connecting the restroom in purple, the clinic in red, the storage room in yellow, and the mechanical and electrical room in orange. To give a better understanding of this design hierarchy, this ideal design was based on Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of need in which on the bottom of the pyramid is psychological need, which is then translated into a food court. On this slide, starting on the upper left, we have the chairs and tables of the cafeteria, followed by a view of the hallway connecting the restroom, storage room, mechanical and electrical room, and the clinic. Starting from the left side, in the middle, we have a view of the elevated cafeteria followed by the clinic. And lastly, on the bottom, we have the inclined elevator and escalator. On this slide, in blue, we have the curved office spaces. In yellow, the escalator. In red, the two fire exits. And in purple, the inclined elevator. On this slide, in blue, we have the regular straight-sided office spaces, and if we look in the middle around the round garden, which is an entrance to the office from there. On this slide, in blue, we have a circular indoor garden, which gives a sense of nature indoors. On this slide, in blue, we have the gym locker, and in green, the gym area located on the far right so as to not distract office workers and give a little inspiration to go to work. In red, we have a restroom having the entrance from the circular indoor garden. On this slide, we have a rendered view of the plan, and in precedence to Maslow's hierarchy of need, this is the fourth level of the pyramid, being the safety and needs category which is then translated into an office space. We can see the garden being the centerpiece which is then surrounded by office spaces, and on the corner right, a gym. On this slide, starting from the upper left, we have a visual representation of just the 34th level, having the circular indoor garden followed by the gym area, then on the bottom, two types of the rendered office spaces. On this slide, in blue, we have the restroom, in green, as the centerpiece, the koi pond, in yellow, the escalators, in red, the fire exits, and in purple, the inclined elevators. In this slide, in pink, we have the curved sided park aisle benches and trees, and in green, we have the koi pond bridges. On this slide, in blue, just across the koi pond and beside the washroom, we have the straight sided park aisle benches and trees. On this slide, in blue, in between the two fire exits, we have the straight adjacent sided park aisle benches and trees. In precedence to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this is the third level of the pyramid, being love and belonging which is then translated into a zen in their garden forest park. On this slide, we have rendered a plan of only the 35th level featuring the massive centerpiece koi pond surrounded by aisle benches and trees, elevators and escalators, and a washroom on the lower right. 
On this slide, we have a visual representation of just the 35th level. Starting on the upper right is the straight-sided aisle heading to the washroom followed by a massive koi pond centerpiece on the middle. And in the middle of the left side is a view of the curved-sided aisle and on the bottom is a view after just coming out from the elevator. On this light in blue, we have bookshelves by the curved glass wall. In green, we have restrooms followed by, in pink, a chemical room. In yellow, the escalators. In red, the fire exits. And in purple, the inclined elevators. On this light in green, we have the round study tables. And in pink, a computer area for the residences. On this slide, we have in pink the baggage counter where residents could leave their belongings and loiter in the library. And in orange is the librarian's desk where they could borrow books and ask directions when necessary. Based on Maslow's hierarchy of need, this is the second level of the pyramid being esteem, which is then translated into a library. The centerpiece is the elevated librarian's area where storage is held and is surrounded by bookshelves, round study tables, intermediate seats, by the escalator, and a computer area. On this slide, we have a visual representation of just the 36th plan. Starting from the upper left is the librarian's area, followed by a view from the shelves, and finally on the bottom, a rounded table view in between the washroom and bookshelf aisle. On this slide in blue, we have the preacher's platform or coda. In green, we have the washroom. In pink, the church pews. In red, a fire exit. And in purple, an inclined elevator. On this slide in green, we have a moss prayer room. In pink, a storage room for their necessary belongings. And in yellow, on the middle, an escalator. On this slide, we have in blue a social space where people of different religious beliefs could be one. In green, an imam's room where the Muslim prayer leader could reside after. And in pink, is a small room connected to the Catholic prayer area for the priest. On this slide, we have in blue a social space where people of different religious beliefs could be one. In green, an imam's room where the Muslim prayer leader could reside after. And in pink, is a small room connected to the Catholic prayer area for the priest. On this slide, we have a visual representation of just the 37th level. Starting from the upper right, we have the Muslim prayer room or mosque. In the middle left side, we have the entrance below from the library followed by a view from the social spaces with great views of Subic and lastly on the bottom we have views from the church pews during a mass. We now have a rendered top elevation of the Complex A residences. We have the front elevation of Complex A. We have the rear elevation of Complex A. We have the right elevation of Complex A. And lastly, we have the left elevation of Complex A. The concept of the velodrome is featuring Subic's environmental beauty, which uplifts our idea of sharing the site's bird-friendly nature. Since Subic is a bird-rich site and home to many tropical birds, ranging from indigenous to non-indigenous species, we were impelled by one species specifically, the green racket tail which caught our attention because of its endemism to only so big. We wanted the velodrome to be an environment which can be adapted easily. Similarly, in the green racket tail's characteristics, athletes need to adapt to its environment easily to be able to focus so one of the materials used in the exterior is steel shingles, providing not just a modern look but also environmentally friendly and energy efficient. It reflects solar radiant heat instead of absorbing it, and the idea of using shingles drew inspiration from the bird's feathers with its overlapping structure and with it providing protection and insulation. 
In the elevations, the front which will have a staircase leading to the public entrance has a height of 160 meters. The rear with the height of 112 meters will have an opening for the parking and access to the basement. It also provides two staircases for the athlete's entrance and the staff and media entrance in the ground floor. While the width is 300 meters for the base plan and the upper mezzanine level 275 meters. The basement will be within the Ogle platform since it will be private and only accessible to athletes, staff, and media. So besides their entrance in the ground floor, they can go directly to the basement instead. There will be three access points in the basement. First, the blue arrow will be the athlete's entrance and as they enter here, it will be a private space for them. The second orange arrow is the media and staff entrance. When they enter here, it leads them to an open area, but they will also have their own private space. Third, the red arrow is the VIP entrance for the special guests, which is close to the VIP lounge. It is enclosed and separated, so both athletes and staffs and guests will have a sense of privacy. Here, the orange encircled ones are the main elevators going to the ground and mezzanine level. There will be four fire exits, the color red, on each side of the building, and besides it, the color yellow, are the four service elevators. Next, the restrooms would be seven in total, two of which would be toilet only, and the other with showers, especially for the athletes, but media and staff would also have, so if they want to take a shower, they can. We made sure that there will be a restroom available, for every six spaces most. This is the whole athlete's area. When you enter, first would be the activity room where athletes can train or use it for exercise. Besides it would be the fitness area, the gym, so athletes can exercise and cycle here. There would be also a TV where they can watch the match or the commentators or the interviews while exercising or waiting for their time. There will be three men and three women changing in lockers room, located at the middle so it will be near each facility. Next is the physiotherapy room near the changing and lockers room. So athletes can go here especially after match if they need to get checked in their physical state and it's no hassle since it's near the changing rooms already. Next to it is the clinic for emergencies or injuries, so they have their own private one for immediate access. And next to it is the doping control room, where they get tested before the match. It is also near a restroom so they can immediately take the test there in case the restroom inside is full. Last is the referee's lounge. They would have their own changing and lockers room inside and a sitting area. It's also inside the athlete's area so if they have something to discuss, they can privately without catching the media or staff's attention. Before going to the media and staff side, outside between each private space would be a space for the media to interview the athletes and a two-storage space for media and sound equipment. In the media and staff area, first is the media lounge, close to the interview area so they can go work and rest inside and watch the match alternatively when it's ongoing. Next to it would be an open space cafeteria for all media and staff to eat, also to accommodate the food for the VIPs. It will be filled with cafes and food stands ready available. Next to it is the staff lounge for the staffs to rest and be within a different ambience other than the office. Here will be two rooms of conference and meeting rooms. One is accessible from outside while the other one is only accessible in the office. So this will be mostly used for office while the other one for guests. Then the offices. It will be three rooms connected all together. 
two rooms will have extra room inside for workshops or storages. Also within the private space is the VIP lounge, located here because it's closest to the VIP entrance and also enclosed for privacy, so if ever guests can easily be able to have meetings, that's why it's next to the meeting rooms. At the middle around the infield will be a multi-purpose space or for concession stands. Going to the ground floor plan. There will be three access points as well here. The blue arrow is for the athletes. Next, the orange arrow is for the media and staff. And on the right, the red arrow is for the public. Each entrance will consist of three doors to accommodate as much people. These orange encircled ones are the main elevators. The color red, the fire exits, which can lead to outside and next to it are the color yellow for service elevators. Additionally, there would be stairs, four in total, going to the mezzanine level. Next are the restrooms. So an, in addition, there will be two extra restrooms near the public entrance so they can easily access it and don't need to go further in if they want to use it. Once you enter the velodrome from the public entrance, there will be a lobby and a reception area at the middle. Here, you would be given seat tickets before going in. Securities will also be placed on each side, so before going in, they would check the people for safety. And additional security areas in the back side. Next, on the upper side will be filled of retail stores and mechanical shops for bikes. So the athletes and public can buy sport related goods and bike stuffs as souvenirs or get their bike fixed or upgraded. And below would be filled with restaurants, cafes to accommodate the public and athletes different tastes. Then we go to the middle part which is the seating area. It will accommodate 12,000 seats in total. And the cycling track which is the important part of the velodrome, would be 250 meters. And the infield inside where the other sport courts can be placed is essentially for the athletes to wait and rest here. We go next to the mezzanine plan, which overlooks the ground. So from the mezzanine level, you can see the match. But this floor is mainly for the VIPs and the commentators and the live broadcast. In the mezzanine level, there will be a total of four toilets here. Next, the orange encircled ones are the main elevators. The color yellow are the service elevators and the color red are the fire exits, accessible to basement and the stairs from ground. There will be two VIP boxes with 25 seats max. Next, on the left side is the commentator's box and where live broadcast will happen during the match. And the whole floor will be available for concession stands, so it's a multi-purpose area in general. Next is the aquatic center, which was uh, inspired by the fins of lionfish that live within the Subic Bay. Here are some isometric views, but we're going to move to the elevations. So the width of the aquatic center is 330 meters, while the height is around 130 meters, which is quite big. Next, we're going to talk about the floor plans of the aquatic center. On the ground floor, there are many spaces. There are retail spaces, reception slash booth, staff area, restaurant, kitchen, storage, service elevator, elevator, fire exit, polyclinic, training pool, gym, female restroom and changing room, and male restroom and changing room. So within, within the reception booth, there's a, uh, there's a ticket booth for people who came here 
from public transportation. And if they want to go to the other typologies within the Olympic Village, they can just buy it within the reception booth. And the fa- forgot to mention, the fire exit is conveniently located uh, in similar places to the entrance and exit for the public athletes and VIP users. So, uh, the entrances and exits are divided into three categories. Uh, first, the public, the public, the public, e- the public entrance is located near the restaurant beside it. And then, as for the VIP, it's located near the entrance for the VIP is located more towards near the fire exit. As for the athlete's entrance, it's uh, specially divided on the other side of the building. So within the athlete's area, there is a training pool, a gym, which both have their own female locker and changing room. Plus, on on the gym and on the training pool space, there is a polyclinic in case of emergency. Plus, the, ele- the, the elevators and the service elevators are also near the fire exit in order for the users to notice it and not forget where it's conveniently located. And while... The users are uh, buying their tickets. They can they can conveniently buy food nearby and or souvenirs if they want a memento. As for the staff area, there is a storage room and a break room for them. There's also they also have their own changing and locker room which is also divided by gender or gender identity. The same thing with uh the same thing with the training pool space and the gym. They also have their own changing room and locker room for the athletes. There's also a storage facility for placing their items on equipment for the competition so next we're going to move to the second floor plan the elevator the elevator the service elevator and uh, the fire exit are located are located at the same place as the ground floor plan in the ground floor plan there is also a reception booth, staff area, restaurants with working kitchen, storage, and its own female restroom and cha- female restroom and changing room and male restroom and changing room. There's also um some retail spaces. So within the second, f- within the second floor, there. There is the cold room and the boiler room, which is which is only accessible by the staff. And then, in order for the pub, in order for the public to enjoy the many food it offers, there's also a lot of restaurants within the second floor plan. And within each restaurant, there is also a staff area and their own toilet so that they don't have to share with the staff uh, they don't have to stay they don't have to share with the public and for co- convenience sake so the next is the third floor plan the third floor plan has retail spaces uh, reception slash booth slash booth, 
staff area, restaurants, kitchen, storage, service elevator, elevators, fire exit, polyclinic, pool, athletes break and waiting room, female restroom and changing room, male restroom and changing room. So within the third floor plan is where the Olympic and diving pool are, where the venue is. So the reception slash booth is where the users can buy a ticket before accessing. And within the same floor, there's also it's also been separated for athletes so they that so that they may have their own privacy. Uh nearby the diving pool are waiting rooms with their own kitchen in case so that the athletes don't need to go far to find food. And then conveniently located on all corners of within the space venue are polyclinics and male and female changing room and lockers for convenience sakes for the athletes and staff. Plus for the staff, there's also a storage and break room nearby for them. And also within the third floor are uh, some restaurants and souvenir shops for anything they need for souvenirs, mementos, uh, uh, necessary items, etc. I forgot to mention that each floor has uh, each floor has two restrooms that can two restrooms and are separated by male by female and male so next is the fourth floor plan like all the other floors the fourth floor plan has a retail space reception slash booth staff area restaurants with kitchen security elevator and service elevator fire exit and female restroom and changing room and male restroom and changing room. Uh, for the fourth floor plan, uh, this is where the VIP area is. Uh, not VIP, it's more like for spe- people who have special passes where they can sit. And then there's also a... We- uh, looking area for people with wheelchairs and then besides the reception slash boot slash boot is the security and locker storeroom for the public in case they brought anything or want to leave behind anything and within the fourth floor fan there are many offices and banks for the sake of the users who don't have enough money they can just go there and withdraw some and if the users are ever hungry you can just access to the many restaurants also conveniently located within the floor plan or if they're feeling a bit jittery or they don't want to sit all day they can just walk out and go out and ex- to the balcony and experience the beautiful view of Subic Bay they can take selfies. There's also a playground playground within the balcony since it's a very big space. And then there's also going to, there's also going to be hosted of some boots for food, uh mementos and etc. And lastly is the mezzanine floor plan. So in the mezzanine floor plan, it's a special VIP VVIP area where uh, the hosts of the Olympics or the athletes who have loved ones or family who they want to watch their special competition, they can just sit here and, and enjoy the competition from this vantage point. Plus, if the athletes ever want like some peace and quiet they can climb up here into the vip vip area to relax and wait for their turn while also being interviewed by the media center which is uh, for by the media which is conveniently located nearby 
where where it towers over the where it towers over the competition venue so that the media center can rec- record what's ever happening in the venue while also making it easy for them to access to the area where they can interview the athletes. And within the media center, there's also a storage room for them to place their equipment. So that's the aquatic center. Okay, so this is the design for the Olympic Stadium. We designed its form to be inspired from the ocean, just like our other presidents, such as the residents, which was derived from the similar concept, which is the waves of the ocean. And also adding to that, the location of Subic, which is near the bodies of water, and also the presence of Aquatic Center, which is adjacent to the stadium, is how we came up with this form that mimics the form of the water and also the underwater corals. So as you can see, this is the top view of the Olympic Stadium along with the front and side elevation. And it states that the front elevation or the width of the stadium is 75 meters, while the side elevation or the length of the stadium is 85 meters. So this is the ground floor plan of the Olympic Stadium. And it was divided into four parts, which is the VIP area on the right, the media area where the press conference are going to be held on the top left, the player area on the left side located beside the open field and the recreational areas or can also be considered as the public areas for the crowd. There is also restrooms located on the four sides of the stadium to accommodate everyone. So the first part we're going to talk about is the players area. It is located beside the open field so players, staff members have easy access to the locker rooms and the field. And for the players area, there are two sides, one for each team that's participating in the tournament. The player area consists of locker rooms, bathrooms, and other amenities. So the next one would be the press or media area, which is beside the player's area. It is for the convenience on the player's side since some players or coaches may need to attend the conference before and after the matches for interviews and other stuff like that. Then there is the media room from where they can control the live broadcast of the conference and the pantry room for the staff and athletes during the interviews. So the next one is the recreation and VIP area inside the stadium. The VIP area is located within the elevators and fire exit or staircases inside the stadium. And the recreational areas are pretty much accessible by both athletes, staff members, and the public. These recreational areas include retail stores, restaurants, gym or fitness room, lounge areas, and a gallery. So a part of the recreational area is the retail stores. This is where the public can buy merchandises related to the Olympics and other clothing materials being sold inside. And the other one is restaurant and cafe where the public can stay before, during, and after the tournament on the day of the matches in their own times. So the next one is the fitness and rehabilitation areas inside the stadium. These can be used by both athletes and the public depending on the time frame and are open for membership to be able to access these amenities inside the stadium. So the next recreational areas are the gallery and the clinic. The gallery can be considered as a place where we can provide the public with artworks related to the culture of not only Subic but but also Philippines to be able to provide awareness for the international public and the clinic can be used in moments of accidents inside the stadium and lastly for the recreational areas is the lounge area where people can stay before during and after the matches on the day and lastly for the ground floor are the restrooms where they can be located on the four sides of the stadium to maximize convenience for the public it has both male and female restrooms for the public and a utility room that is for the working staff and then this is the second floor plan of the stadium the brown area is the public area for the public it is quite flexible in terms of functionality since they can add food stalls in those open areas and souvenir stalls for the public and then the blue color are the service areas on the second floor and lastly for the olympic stadium is the mezzanine plan consisting of the VIP area and the media area are located. 
the VIP area has a number of VIP rooms for the visiting public along with the restroom, while the media area consists of a broadcast room for commercial purposes and a commentary box for both international and local media and a broadcast room while the game is ongoing.